I'm going to look at this painting as a really masterful example of how an artist creates a focal point in their painting or composition. Now this piece is called The Girl with the Pearl Earring and it was painted by the Dutch uh, Vermeer, Johannes Vermeer, in 1665. And it's pretty much, uh, you know, the clearest example of a focal point that you might be able to choose from uh, the sort of Western art canon. Now this piece the, has a title that kind of gives it away. Uh, this pearl earring is the subject of the, the title of the painting, although I guess the girl herself also is the subject. Um, but let's just look at some ways that Vermeer really draws your attention to this pearl earring in the way that he uh, created this painting. So. One thing to notice is this bright spot of white light reflecting off of the pearl earring. That is really striking, especially because it's against a black background of pure black. So there isn't much competing with your eye. Uh, you're, you're basically looking at her face, and you aren't really noticing her outfit that much without looking somewhat closely, and she's just on a kind of blank, generic black background. So this bright white on this dark black is uh, Vermeer using contrast to create a sense of focus. Now contrast is the extremes of lightness and darkness, and this is pretty much at the maximum level of contrast. So that's very clear. Another thing that Vermeer does is really uh, kind of direct your eye towards the earring with her gaze. I think it's really interesting how she seems to be almost looking at you looking at the earring. Uh, her eyes are pointed towards the earring, but she can't actually see her own ear. Yet somehow you have the sense of her gaze sort of referring back to her earring. And this also has to do with the angle of her face and the way that her body is positioned. It makes the earring quite prominent. You know, imagine if her torso was shifted in a different direction or her, her face was tilted slightly differently. Now one last thing that I think is important to discuss is the way that he arranges the shapes in the space of the canvas to draw attention to the earring. There's something that uh, we call the golden mean. It's sometimes also called the golden ratio. And it's roughly uh, the point at which the two-thirds uh, division happens. Now if we look at where the earring is in the overall space of the canvas here, um, it's kind of at the two-thirds point, really, really close. I, I would say this looks like, you know, two-thirds of the overall space, horizontally speaking, and this looks like one-third. And if you go the other direction, this also applies. I would say that this is roughly the two here, and then this is roughly the one. And this is a principle that's very, you know, almost universal throughout Western art. And it isn't always the case that the focal point is at the golden mean, but it very often is, especially in art from the Baroque and Renaissance periods. And uh, this, this painting qualifies being from 1665. It's kind of uh, a Baroque piece, Baroque era piece. So the golden mean is just another hint towards what the painter might have been thinking about. And even if you don't consciously know that looking at this, I think on some level everyone has a kind of gut response to seeing a composition centered on this golden mean concept. Uh, it looks balanced, it's pleasing to the eye, and I think it's just sort of built into human nature. We like seeing things with this two-thirds relationship. And I think Vermeer was probably quite conscious of this, and many of the painters uh, of his day surely were. Sometimes uh, determining the focal point of a painting can tell you a lot about what the artist's intent was, what they were really trying to communicate with their painting. Uh, this isn't necessarily always the case, but it's very true in this example, uh, the School of Athens, painted by the Italian Renaissance artist Raphael. Now here he depicts a whole array of Greek philosophers, the great philosophers of ancient Greece, um, uh, who kind of founded Western philosophy. Now let's look at this composition. Uh, if you can see, the perspective is directing right in that direction, the perspective being sort of, you know, the angle from which we see this, the, the vantage point. 
and everything is pointing that way. Uh, all of these lines in the architecture, all of these arcs are sort of centering on this area. And what is in that area? Well, let's, let's take a closer look here. Now this happens to be Plato, the great philosopher. This happens to be Aristotle. Uh, also a great philosopher, and Aristotle was Plato's student, and that's depicted here because Plato is older uh, than Aristotle in this image. Now, they are completely the center of this painting, and it's a painting about Western philosophy, and these two are considered to be sort of the pillars on which Western philosophy stands, and that is really driven home by the way that Raphael constructed this painting. He really wanted to communicate that concept through the way that he created the composition of the painting by making Plato and Aristotle the clear focal point. Sometimes the focal point of a piece isn't always completely clear, and I think this photograph by Alfred Stieglitz uh, is a little bit more ambiguous, a little bit more complex. Uh, it's called The Steerage. It was taken in 1907, and it depicts uh, a passengers aboard a steamship. Now, what, what draws your eye? What, what do you first look at? You know, there's a lot going on. It's, it's sort of a, a busy image, but it has a kind of harmonious balance. And Alfred Stieglitz said that he was really more interested in the shapes underlying this image than the subject of the image itself. Now, let's see, we've got this, this bridge here, and that really draws my eye. We also have this, uh, this pole and this pole and they create this sort of triangular shape right here. And that's sort of eye-catching, especially because this bright sky behind there uh, is, is really um, stands out in contrast to the dark figures in, in the foreground. One thing that also really draws my eye is this man here with this bright round hat. And for me personally, I think I would identify that as the focal point. Um, also because he's he's sort of in a kind of triangular relationship with everything else. 